what is going on guys welcome back to another endgame video and in this lesson i'm going to show you guys a really cool technique that you can use to neutralize two connected enemy pawns in other words when you have two pawns that are marching down the board as black what you can do is you can actually neutralize these so it essentially prevents white from queening and the technique is really simple it's this what you want to do with your one pawn is you want to take it and butt it up against the lead pawn so now you can see by doing this not only are you preventing white from taking this pawn and moving it forward any further but what you also force them to do in this position and of course i know there's typically going to be other pieces on the board kings and probably rooks and whatever but you are now preventing them from progressing this pawn as well and the reason for that is of course if they do then you can just go ahead and capture it and not only did they just lose a pawn but you also advanced your black pawn one square further to the queening rank so of course this is a very simple concept and you may think okay this pawn play it's kind of a, a minor topic but this can actually make or break games and it does so a lot of the time especially with beginner games now if you take a look at this position right here this kind of looks similar to the video where we covered fox in the chicken coop where black had two pawns and white had two pawns in a structure like this and they were locked together well with a mistake from white what you can actually do is you can take advantage of that with the technique that we just saw now here i set it up where it's white's turn to move and you can see from stockfish they're recommending h4 and also, if you see this little indicator right here where it says 0, 0, and it's half white and half black, that means that this position, according to Stockfish, is even. It should be, you know, an even position, a dross position. No side has one advantage over the other. So, of course, the proper position that we know is moving this pawn to h4 and therefore not allow black to progress their pawn on the g-file any further unless it wants to be captured so of course we know that's the right move however in this demonstration what i want to show is what happens whenever white makes the mistake of playing the pawn to g4 now <laughs> that's kind of funny immediately stockfish says okay so this is definitely losing for white because believe it or not even though this looks like a very different structure Whenever black plays the move g5, they're essentially recreating what we saw in the last video. I don't know if it was the last video, maybe two videos ago, Fox in the Chicken Coop, where it's essentially the same thing as having these pawns locked together. Why is that? Because instead of just locked together pawns where neither side can progress, it's, it's almost worse actually because now white can indeed progress, but then black could just recapture and have a passed pawn where it can march down to become a queen. So even though it looks, okay, white has one king and two pawns, black has one king and two pawns, so it should be even. That's the reason why it's not, because this is essentially a passed pawn that black is going to try to push down as far as they can go. And these are just like lock pawns, even though black has the minority, it's actually an advantage for black. So just to play this through and show you guys that this technique does indeed work, let's say that white plays something like king to b3, black would go king to d5, again, essentially going to sacrifice this so it can go over and gobble up all the chickens. And now white, let's just say they play b4, king to e4, king captures on b5, king to f4, and then we can just follow Stockfish's suggestions where it goes uh, king to c4, king to g3, attacking both of these pawns, but of course you need to capture the back one first, and then king to d4, and it really doesn't matter what white is going to do in this position. It's going to capture king to e3, capture the other one, and now what white's going to do is they're just going to try to get in front of the pawn, and black is just going to play king to h3. Now after g1, again trying to prevent black from queening, what black is going to do is it's just going to go ahead and play pawn to g4. Now, believe it or not, this is black's version of king on the sixth and pawn on the fifth, where you have a pawn and three squares ahead of it before it becomes a queen and a king in one of the three central squares ahead of it. Now, just a... Uh, follow through and just finish with this video uh white can play anything it doesn't really matter what 
Uh, black is guaranteed to queen anyways. We'll just say that they play h1. Black is going to play g3. And now if white doesn't have many options, goes back to g1, then black can just go ahead and play g2. And again, this pawn is controlling this square and this square. And the black king is controlling these three. So the white king has only one option. What do they want to do? They're just going to take their king and move it to f2. Now, of course, instead of queening, black is going to play h2. And, I mean, it doesn't really matter where black goes. Let's say they go to e3, queen, and game. So, one little simple pawn maneuver. After that, you can use all the concepts that you learned in the previous videos. And that is how you can use one pawn to neutralize two connected enemy pawns. So, a simple technique, but a very effective one. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next video.